This is the SNL Vaultcast. What's up, everybody? I'm small. I'm large. Medium is still going. But, uh, Youth Large is back. Yay! I'm back! <laughs> he's not rehearsing with his band. It's because I, mean, I girlfriend. done fucked I mean, up my shoulder. <laughs> he, he's not playing kazoo this week. No. But <laughs> hey, how about that Jurassic Park 3D, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to go see it. I have not seen it, but, uh... I, mean, I was supposed to Dude, this the week. 3D just fuck up my head so bad. We don't care. So bad. Fuck your mom. The only 3D movie I ever saw, and this was the poorest cho- choice that I could have ever had, was Jackass 3D. Oh my god, that was the <laughs> best choice. Probably the best, was... best use of 3D since Amityville 3D. That was the or first Avatar. and last 3D movie <laughs> I went to go see in theaters. That's the pinnacle. That's the That's... best 3D usage <laughs> since this, this, the Master Systems 3D goggles. <laughs> <laughs> You had to really stretch for that one, didn't you? <laughs> if you've seen them, you understand. I forgot that shit existed. <laughs> they come into my store now, then, and I'm like, what? Oh my god! Let me know next time a pair shows up. They are always messed up. Like somebody literally, you know those things? Um, I guess it was like a '90s thing. They're like plastic strings that you can weave together to make bracelets. Yeah. Somebody literally tried to make an extra basically like we had a pair of goggles coming in the box was in good shape but you pull the goggles out one of the arms of the glasses is missing Mm. and a tie tied to it is one of these plastic string things (laughs) like they basically had tried they'd put the goggles on and then like tie it onto their other ear (laughs) i i never really understood exactly what is happening in that wow anyway That's that's a shame reader mail do we have reader mail let's see reader mail do we have reader mail Reader mail. Uh, Reader mail. No. Holy shit, we do. What? I guess, I guess that's what happens when you beg people on Facebook to email us. Shh, don't give away our trade Shh. secrets. I mean, people like our show no, enough people... to mail. <coughs> we're, we're the number one gaming podcast on the internet right now. Don't you? We're know? the number one gaming podcast uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania. We we are the number one gaming vault cast on the gaming vault. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We're number one. We're number one. Okay, Spenny so Werther Jaegerman Jensen. Let's see. What, what email do we have? Uh, I never asked make, for this. Do you want to make your penis larger? That is not reader mail. Oh, that is. Spam. That's your mail. Okay, then you're in the mail. spam folder. That's not mail. That's not mail. That's a female. Oh, we we got a comment on a YouTube video. I got an email about that. <laughs> it's uh, from Jesse Dorona, who says, "I love Tomb Raider, but I agree the multiplayer was terrible." Thank you. Thank you for that contribution. Moving on. <laughs> thanks for coming into work today. Thanks Thanks for coming to work today. Next one, Leslie Stewart. You know her, don't you? I uh, kind of know her. You going to say hi? We're Facebook friends. Hi. Hello. I hope you're listening to this. How I much, hope we haven't offended you already. How much do you love Animal Crossing? Because I love it. Okay, that's all. Smiley face. The majority of my Animal Crossing experience is the Hey Ash, What You Playing episode. <laughs> <laughs> Pooped. <laughs> or the, uh, what was it, uh... Awesome Crossing? I haven't seen it. You Well, you know the, the Metal Gear Awesome things? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, There's that one. It's like, you can go vi- visit your uh, friends in Poop Town. We're like, well, I don't know. I'm supposed to spend Christmas in Dickville. I <laughs> <laughs> Dickville. But uh, I love Animal Crossing, so fuck you guys. Uh, I, I, try, lo- I tried. I tried. It's one of those kind of things where it's like, you know, you really got to... Be in the mood for it, and you have to be in the mood for it. Yep, I loved it on GameCube. I loved it more that you could hack the save files. Joe's as uh, Ashley's playing now. Yeah, Joe's girlfriend is playing it right now. Your your Facebook is blowing up right now. I'm turning your speakers now. No, I need to know when the Facebook posts hit Man. so I can check my phone then and feel just important. Just open Facebook on your computer. And yeah, watch. it is open. That's why it's going. But, yeah, those are actual messages, though. Yeah, no, and they go right to my phone, too. Oh, well, then fucking answer them. Well, I just did, actually, so... Oh. Was it a reader question? Uh, I'm not at liberty to say. 
That's a that's a that's big a fat no. no. Hi, uh, that's a nobody loves us. But yeah, I love Animal Crossing. I am eagerly, eagerly awaiting the 3DS version that comes out this summer. Word. Are they gonna mess around with a uh, like a Wii U version, maybe? No? I'm sure in time, but like yeah. it may take a while before they actually figure out. Hey, we should probably make one of these. I just wasn't like I was probably neck deep in a Command and Conquer game when when Animal Crossing came out. Is just, that what you're calling it? it now? Just, a neck. Balls deep. <laughs> yeah, a, t a turtleneck for some of you out there. Got it. If you get it. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I just, it just yeah. never, I just never played it. I just never got around to it. I guess. What's the next question? Do we have another? All right. One? Next question. James oh, Holland. What up, buddy? Uh, cactus. That's Who me. Who the fuck is your cactus? That's, that's me. I play airsoft with this man. Well, I used to. And my call sign was Cactus. You're like the least prickly looking person I've ever met. Talk really? Talk to some of the women I've loved. Open your eyes. <laughs> well, you, look at his face. Yeah, you look who's ro rocking the neck beard now, buddy. So I gotta, says, says the guy with neck. the full Yeah, but beard. he's got a short neck, so it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I just he's got a I, small I have, dome. I, I, I just I, have four chins, so I'm, I'm covering. So that. you have four neck beards. Uh, I'm yeah. on two. I'm hoping to decrease. And you that just have number. a ball sack on your. Anyway, team. I do. The question. The question. The question. Cactus, I have a gaming question for you. So we're out of this one. Yeah. What do you think the best way for me to boost my Minecraft performance? Um, Should there be an is in there somewhere? Start start drinking lots of Red Bull 24/7. Quit your job. Quit your family. Kill your girlfriend. Just never stop mining, and you'll be okay. I just feel like there should be an "is" in that sentence somewhere. No, uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you think "is" the best way for me to boost my Minecraft performance, <laughs> um, it's in brackets. Do you, I? Well, I don't it's know if like he means like his his gameplay performance, um, uh, or get a his, better graphics card, or his actual computer performance. Yeah, or, yeah right. Uh, address that one instead. And just oh well, yeah, yes. all right. Well, address the computer. If you're trying to play more Minecraft and get better at it. Kill everyone you know and just do nothing but play Minecraft. And drink, and never sleep. Drink lots of Red Bull. Um, if you're trying to increase your, your computer performance, get on my level. <laughs> Buy a $500 graphics card. <laughs> I mean, no, um, and make sure that uh, there, your Java is being taken care of by your actual graphics card, as opposed to check your drivers. Yeah, you know, uh, update everything that needs that that it needs to run. Uh, sometimes texture packs can help too. Yes, sometimes you can I change agree. the textures and make the game not only look better but run better and add things to it. Like I forget which one I installed on mine, but it's pretty much like if you Google search like texture packs for. Um, for Minecraft, it's pretty much like the be all end all go to one that everybody yeah, at least starts with. And I noticed like frame rate increases and even just like obviously it made me want to play it a little bit more because it looked a little nicer. I was a little bit more like, you know, submersed into the actual area as opposed to just like, um, wow, that block of grass looks a lot like that block of sand. And, and when you get bored <laughs> with it, go look up Ace of Spades. And preferably one of the one of the older versions, not the newer one that came out. Although the newer one is mad fun, it is basically if you took Minecraft and merged it with World War One. That is a very fun game. It will. <laughs> that is a good side distraction. No. <laughs> no, it's not like Day of Defeat. Uh, cool, it's though. well, kind. Of, I guess kind of because of the bolt action rifles. Yeah, right. But it's it's it think Minecraft, but the map has a has a, a certain size, a huge size, but it, it's a specified size. Spe you know what I mean. Specific, yeah. um, and it's capture the flag, but you can dig and build, and everybody has bolt action rifles. Yep. It's oh, hysterical. And, and also keep up on your updates because the Minecraft updates uh, they'll so, they'll sometimes sneak some in where uh, it makes like huge fucking changes to the way that you would um, create certain things in the game or use certain resources. Uh, so make sure to. Check your patch notes and shit like that and keep up on that. You guys are fucking nerds. Anyway. Next question is from uh, gofuckyourself at gmail.com. says, what the hell does the SML stand for? Um, it stands for... First, uh, super go monkey fuck lesions. yourself. <laughs> super monkey lesions. Yep, super monkey lesions. That was, that was my favorite one. Um, uh, it it or, really stood for small, medium, large because Tim is small. Bogue is kind of medium sized, and I am. Yeah, it started, large, the whole podcast started asshole. as a joke. But if if you really sent in that question and Joe's not just making it up, shut then up. you're an idiot because of the fact that it says it in the actual email address. Yeah, shut, shut up. Joe made it up, guys. Yes, Derp. I made it up. Derp. 
derp, derp, derp. This is what we get. This we get, is what happens uh, when we let I still, somebody control I still the think without Bo here for a while, it's just going to be Squishy Man Love podcast. Squishy Man, squishy man Love. We, we're also debating. I'm sure my fiance will love to hear that. <laughs> we're also debating changing the name of the podcast every 10 or so episodes. So maybe if you want to send in suggestions of what the S, M, and the L should stand for every single episode, and, you and can send those to our email as well. Suck my labia. No, yeah. we're podcast. supposed to be a professional gaming podcast. We can't talk about labias and penises Super Mario all the time. Land podcast. <laughs> no, no, because that's just no, that if, game is the shit. If if somebody, mm. all right, we'll do this. In between, we'll do a contest for the next ten weeks. <laughs> For the, next, <laughs> for the next ten episodes, and we will promote this. We'll put this on the right ends. Whoever sends us in what we think is the funniest name, and we'll we'll, we'll build them up and we'll read them all off. Um, at episode twenty, we'll celebrate at episode twenty. We'll have a party. Um, whoever sends us in the funniest name, we'll give them like a GameStop gift card or a. Maybe we could send them some sort of care package with a bunch of. Bullshit. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll just send a you a fun ca- little swag pack or. Yeah, we'll send you a swag pack. It might be full of flesh. It's going to be full of... <laughs> <laughs> That's an expense... Hey, man. Bring it back. Bring, bring it, it back. Bring it back. That would so, be an expensive fucking swag bag. Flesh and Shaq Fu. So that THQ. I do have, I do have some uh, leftover swag from packs that I could possibly put into Yeah, the, we, uh, could, we could send some cool stuff. So whoever sends in the funniest one, we'll almost do it like a Cards Against Humanity thing. <laughs> Word. Yeah. We are Cards Ours. <laughs> and we will, uh, we will send you a care package. Yeah, that means you have to actually enter though. So small, medium, large, podcast, podcast at the Gmails, <laughs> at the mails of the G. Small, medium, large, podcast. That's what we should. Bod. <laughs> anyway, no so, one wants to see this bod. So first, wait. wait there's no okay. more questions, right? No, wait. There's still oh, more. you shut the fuck up. We got more. Really? This is exciting. That's now. what self whoring does for us. I'm excited. John, I'm gonna butcher this name. John Gongliuski. <laughs> Gongleski. What? what? Gong- is Just call him Gongo. Gongo's his okay, nickname. Gong- is it Gong- Gongo? What's up, Gongo? Gongo. 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 How are you? Hi, what Gongo. You th- <laughs> Shut your horn out. <laughs> what do you think about the Kickstarter phenomenon in games like Wasteland 2 and Torment Tides of New Numenera? Is that the... I think that's the... Correct me if I'm wrong, Gongo, but I think Torment is the uh, Planescape Torment successor that they're doing that just became the biggest gaming Kickstarter of all time. I think that was the news story. Possibly, uh, the the only Google, real Google. You, it's you're all the way over there. Oh, it's so hard to just reach over one right, foot uh, and, what and am I, what am I searching go here? to the browser in the bottom. Yeah, and then Google's Google's you Google's the Planescape Torment successor. I know you can't spell successor, but Shut Google up. will help. The, in Chrome, the, the the address bar is also a search bar, so way to waste all of our viewers' time. God damn it, Successor. Huber. Yeah, Successor. Metal Gear. <sighs> now you click yeah, on the Yeah, Planescape Torment Successor is now the biggest Kickstarter. All right, now click on the link. What's the name of it? What's the name? What's the name? I need to know the name. Uh, Colonel. Colonel, what's Torment the name? Tides of Num- Numenera? Numa. Yeah, so that is the one. Okay. Tor- Torment Tides of <laughs> Numa Numa. <laughs> Tide, yeah, I was just going to say Numa. <laughs> Tides of Numa Numa. Um, yeah. I think Kickstarter's great. I think it's... I, I, Shit, yeah. I think that we're we're going to see... Um, I mean, I've been, I've been talking about how we're going into this new age of mobile games and digital distribution and how we're going to see consoles disappear over the next decade. And this is, this is sort of what's going to happen is we're going to see this, this new market form where people who grew up playing games are going to be making the games that we're going to play because these people are going to go out and say, man, you know, I, I really want to make this type of game. And I know these big companies aren't going to do it because they're all about these, you know, microtransactions and forcing multiplayer on games that shouldn't have multiplayer and giving us bullshit we don't want. And then being mad when nobody buys the game because it's not what anybody wanted. So what Kickstarter is allowing is people like, what's up, Kunal? Um, <laughs> what happened? To go out and um, make a little company and do a Kickstarter and get the money they need to produce a game that they think people will like because they are the gamers that play these games or have been playing these games for years. And um, it, it allows us to see things like the you know successor to Planescape Torment or... Um, or whatever, you know, I mean, any, any of these games that might not have gotten made because big companies don't think there's a market for it, 
but there's people out there who are willing to pay for it. It, it lets people go out and make a very small risk uh, endeavor, and the game gets made. And if it gets big after that, then they'll you know more power to them. They'll make money from the sales after the Kickstarter. Um, Any Kickstarters that you've backed? I backed uh, Planetary Annihilation, which is an awesome-looking RTS. It's an RTS done by the guys who did stuff like uh, Supreme Commander, and it is a massive, massive RTS. I think it's going to support up to 40 players uh, at a time. God, and that's way too well, many. No, here's the thing. Oh, is it shit. The fights take place in a solar system, so there's multiple planets that will have multiple people on them, and the, the, they're actual spherical planets that you can... Uh, like run all the way around and have your armies fight all the way around. Then you can launch your builder to another planet and have them keep building there. Or, and then you can build on that planet a thing that will launch units back at the other planet. Or you could build thrusters on an asteroid and so launch the like asteroid you, at the planet. So it's kind of like you take like a, a, a very very minuscule sense of a solar empire esque like bounce well, from thing to thing to thing to thing, but put it on a smaller scale like. If you were to take, like, this is going to be the worst reference ever. If you take Spore and had it where it was like you had the the ground level of everything and then you had, like, the space level of everything, you can have the RTS version of, like, all the stuff on the... on the. Well, no, what, what it basically is, think of a typical RTS. You build your base, you build your army, and you and you roll it out to fight the other army. Word. Usually it supports max of eight players. Yeah. Um, Mainly because of, like, map size. Well, maybe and because of map size and, and leading up to recently the... the Processing uh, ability of game systems and computers hasn't been uh, mm, high enough mm. to render thousands of units that would collide with each other. Yeah, but um, math is hard. It's it's the same it's the same principle, but instead of it being a flat map, it's a round map. And uh, then what they're doing from there is they're making it so that now um, you're gonna it's it's a three D space that's this map actually exists in and you can um it's, Hop from place yeah to it's place once place. when you look at it it makes complete sense to you but it's just you can i understand the, the, the concept map is i haven't giant, seen anything of it but yeah, the I, map is I, just I know what you mean. and there's different surfaces you can build on which are which happen <clears> to be planets and there's going to be orbital weapons too apparently which well, I'm, I'm like the worst guy ever at rts's so I don't yeah know no i'm probably the only yeah. one here so, what about um, you any kickstarters i well see i hardly ever like Give people money online because uh, <laughs> well, I'm just like I'm fucking. Well, I'll take that as a no. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that I wanted to back, and at least there's one in particular that got backed enough that it it, it got supported and is actually being put out right now. I think the uh, the PC beta is out right now, but uh, Soul Forge. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, Soul Forge is I, I believe it's being created by some of the people that worked with Ascension. Uh, the well, yeah, it's the same company as Ascension, but and it, the guys who did Ascension originally were some of the creators of Magic the Gathering. Well, uh, yeah, and then there's there's some Magic pros like Brian Kibler that are kind of like hand in hand working with the Soul Forge thing too. But it's purely digital; it's not a trading card based kind of thing. But it's it's like a digital trading card. Yeah, game. for anyone who's familiar with uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers, the uh, digital Magic the Gathering thing, that's all pre constructed decks. Uh, there's no individual cards. Well, you can make. Custom decks and so oh, forth. Yes. Oh well, yeah. Well, it, I would. But I'm the way that similar principle. It's similar principle, but it's 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 a uh, it's a turn-based thing, card game kind of thing. But some of the mechanics can only really be utilized on a digital front because you'll see like when you play a certain card and something happens to it, it will level up to a certain kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the only way that you'd be able to tr keep track of something like that properly is on a digital front. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and plus, like, the, well, some of the math yeah, that's it, involved it with easy. it is on a, a much grander scale, so it might be a little bit more difficult for, like, casual players to bump into if there wasn't something already tracking it for you, which yeah. it does on a digital front as well. Um, but what's cool about this is it's on... Right now it's available on iOS. It's on it's on the iPad. It's yeah. coming to Android and Steam very soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what's cool is if you have an account for this and the way that you would actually purchase the stuff for it it's like you pay five bucks and you have a deck of, you get a new deck of cards that's like whatever kind of deck that you would buy of yeah. the of that creature type or style type or whatever um and then you could take those individual cards and make your own deck out of it and you know 
do what you want with it. But it's like five five bucks a, a deck, which really isn't that bad. Yeah. Um, you, I, as far as I know, you're not going to be able to buy individual cards. So it's not going to be one of those kind of things where there's going to be this huge um, economy-based thing where it's like, well, this card is worth a lot right now, and this one's not. and da, da, da. like It's just, no, straight up, give us this much money, you'll get all these cards right here. It's basically like a predetermined booster pack, so to speak. That's um, but whatever you purchase through your account, regardless of if you're playing it on uh, on your iPad or your Android device or your PC, everything goes across to whatever platform because you log into your account information. That's a good idea. So everything that you've got, regardless of what you're going to play it on, is exactly the same, which I think is really fantastic. Because yes. I'm going to be able to play it on my PC and on my phone, and nothing's going to be different. That's cool. I've only backed one Kickstarter so far, and that was for uh, Overclocked Remix. They're doing a Final Fantasy... God, it's been so long I don't remember. I think it's a Final Fantasy VI album project, and uh, they are ended up including like Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy I to all these backers, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm very eager for it to actually come out. I want to find out which one it is, because I feel like a dick for not knowing. Yeah. What, yeah, it's Final Fantasy VI Kickstarter, and it's coming with shitloads of albums with it. Yeah, I, I actually, um, when we went to PAX, uh, they, they had a huge, uh, a huge thing on you Kickstarter. Let's talk about the rock band. Oh, did you get to talk about I that kind of mentioned it to him just in, in okay. short, yeah, but I definitely we'll haven't keep, mentioned it on here. Yeah, keep going. We'll talk about it another um, time. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but the pa like at, at PAX, they had a, a whole arcade that was based on just Kickstarter projects. That's cool. So you were able to go in there and, and talk to the people that were making the games um, and get like live demos and stuff like that of things that are that you could currently back through Kickstarter. Like, like Kickstarter is making a huge impact on the gaming yeah. industry. One, one thing that I really want to kickstart, and there's three days left, so hun, I don't know if we could pull this off, but uh, Shovel Knight. Have you seen anything on that? Not a clue. It's from Yacht Club Games, which is an offshoot. A couple of the guys from Way Forward are okay. doing this. It's just old school. It's a knight. His weapon <coughs> is a shovel. So, Shovel Knight. Got it. Old school, retro style platformer, action platformer. It looks friggin' awesome. They were asking for 75000 With three days left, they're up to 200000 Sweet. Which is awesome for them. See, I, I love when, like... Kickstarters actually work. I know one yeah. or two people that have uh, put together Kickstarters trying to do stuff like, um, you know, they want to record a a demo of some of their music and stuff like that. Yeah. And I love um, Way Forward, so yeah, the fact but it's, that it, some of the guys from there are doing something. Well, one of the, one of the other things I absolutely love about Kickstarter, and this this comes back to the planetary annihilation thing, is you can get goodies. I love goodies. Yeah. And what I got with this is I'm getting an original, like, old-school PC game big box version of the game. Nice. I'm getting a bunch of alpha and beta keys that I can give out to friends. I'm getting um, three little figurines of the, of the robot command, different styled robot commanders you can play as in the game. I'm getting a USB stick that will also look like a robot that has the game on it. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I think I, I, I get a poster, too. I get a shirt. Uh, and there's different design shirts that you could choose from. Sweet. Like, all of this awesome, awesome stuff. And I I shelled out a hundred bucks for this, and gladly. But it's one of those kind of things where it's like, and this almost comes back to the conversation that we've had on a past episode, it was the whole uh, collector's edition stuff. Yeah. Like, with Kickstarter, it's like, you can really have a, a ton of different versions of a, a quote edition. unquote collector's yeah. edition. Mm -hmm. It's like customizable collector's edition. So it's like if 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 you want to spend this much on the game, you could do that. If you want to spend a little bit extra and get a little bit extra, you can. If you want to spend a lot of bit extra and get a lot of bit extra, cool. Like it's it's really you can kind of make it your own. You yeah. can you can you can set a certain level of their backing program and just be like, you know what, I feel like this is the collector's edition to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really um I think that's really important going forward, too, because, like, like, like you said, we talked about the collector's edition thing, and I've been disappointed by some collector's editions in the past. I love I love goodies, but I, I want ones that are interesting to me. And with Kickstarter, they do that, where you could get, 
you know, you could get this level and get this stuff. Or you could be like, man, you know, I could just spend a little bit more and get three little fucking robot figurines. Or, you yeah. know, like, I, they, they seem to put more effort into it because they know the people that are going to be buying this are the people who are really going to enjoy it. It's, yeah. not, it's not some hokey-ass statue. It, it's not some, you know overly crazy, you know, mass produced thing that... They're rewarding people who yeah. are helping them create a game. And, it, and it's usually things that people are really going to dig because they actually put more thought into it than a marketing team being like, yeah. oh man, you're gonna want, they're going to want a 30 different types of statues in their fucking living room by the yeah, end Yeah, but you know what? The other thing is too, I feel like um, what you get in um, Class A title collector's edition things mm -hmm. and how much they cost... I feel like I get so much more when it comes to the independent Kickstarter thing. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it, it feels like... Because they're producing them to demand instead of mass producing them and having thousands left over in a warehouse. Well, it, it no becomes more of a collector's item than a limited edition, too, because you see a lot of these collector's editions either end up... You can't get your hands on them because somebody at GameStop fucked up your pre-order. Mm -hmm. Or... Um, the Nino Cooney thing happened. Yeah, I, you know, or a company fucks up, like uh, the the Borderlands loot chest. Um, lots, of, lots of things. Up there? Uh, they didn't produce enough of them. Like there's a huge demand. Well, they were pretty forward with the fact that if you want it, pre-order. But fast. there was a there was once again a problem where people who had pre-ordered it didn't get them. So Randy I Pitchford. Didn't, I didn't hear anything. Well, oh, I know a, a lot of people. Were there? Yeah, oh, Randy yeah. Pitchford addressed this at the Gearbox panel. That's that's, that's why they're doing the diamond plated loot chest. Yeah. Which even then, the diamond plated one, they're only going to do what five thousand. Like five thousand. But yeah. they said that if they sell out, they will. Uh, pretty but much they not said they the might. Yeah, and they it said, wouldn't be the same. They said if demand is high enough, they will do a second run, but it will not have the certificate with it that the original will have. Yeah, but they'll, it'll still be the loot chest. It'll it'll still be the diamond plate. But it won't be chest. as much of a collector's but item. Yeah, the on, only the original five thousand. If you just want a cool ass loot yeah. chest, the only thing you're missing is a certificate. Yeah. So for the for the most part, you're getting the same thing. But, uh, it, 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 um, sort of. Sort. La last thing on the Kickstarter front is that Shovel Knight one. The big thing that I want to do is they have a $60 package that... I like this. It's a digital game, and it comes with a digital instruction book, but the $60 package has a printed instruction manual. Yeah, a lot of Kickstarters do like, stuff like real that. Real games today don't have printed instruction manuals. Yeah. And, well, uh, the other thing that I... I um, like, I'm looking into doing a Kickstarter. I'm actually going to be... We're going to be kind of planning it out this weekend for one of my filming projects. Tim Starter. Tim Starter. Tim Starter. Right. Um, for a navigation system called a Tim Tim. Hey. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Joe shakes his head. Uh, it's we got to look into doing Kickstarter, and what's nice about it is like, yes, I have all of this recording equipment. I have a you know filming and audio equipment, and I have a lot of the technical know-how to make a film. But what I realized over the years of doing this is that, I mean, to really get something done, to really get something that looks good done, is you have to pay professional people. You yeah. cannot. I mean, you can make a movie on your own, but I mean, I've been working on this thing for a long time, and it's. To the point where I have to move on with my life and let my project go, my you know my dream project go, if I um, if I don't get any real forward momentum on it soon, I have to put it on the back burner. I mean, this is you can see my wall right now. Like there's there's the layout for the trailer for the for the one web series. Um, this there's the outline for the book. This is concept art. There's some pieces of the technology that's in the story bible. I mean, I've got like, things laid out everywhere so I can just focus on it when I need to. You just got to make it happen. Yeah, and what's funny is the Kickstarter isn't even for this. Hmm. It's it's for a short film that leads into it. And yeah. um, it's given friends of mine um, good opportunities who, who have done things where they've got all this groundwork done. And what it allows them to do, or people like me to do, is finish it. Is It's like, cool, everything's ready to go. We just need to shoot it. Let's yeah. get some money. Let's hire some good actors. Let's hire some good people who uh, can do like the CG work. And let's just, let's, let's get it done in like a month or two. And then um, people can, you know, we can share the story. It's really, really letting people who have an idea get it done and get it out there for people to enjoy. Well, that's why I'm going to do one for uh, for my musical project. I will I mean, donate a dollar. Like, you. the way that I'm at right now, I, do I have a decent amount of gear that I've accrued over a couple of years, um, you know, to do a, a, an okay recording of, of what I want to do musically? Sure. Problem is, I don't want it to be okay. 
if you're going to set out to really do something special and something that you're going to be proud of, you want it to be the best that it can be. And you don't want to shortchange anyone that's going to sh show interest of it. And that's why, like, I would want to do a Kickstarter to, you know, go in and take a lot of the, uh, the core um, scratch tracks and everything that I've done to a professional studio why and are you get... scratching the tracks? Fuck. He's a DJ. <laughs> um, but take those into a professional studio and have a producer sit down with me and just be like, well, What the fuck did you do here? Basically. Yeah. No, because I... Cause, what is wrong with you? Are you autistic? Well, no, that that is that is a big part of it. Like, with, with my writing, uh, writing these stories to get filmed, I, I know my screenplay sucks, but I, I'm going to take it to somebody and they're going to tell me it sucks. I'm going to be like, I know. I'm be like, well, what do I do to fix it? Because I, I this is new. Yeah. But you got to pay those people. Yeah. Right. And and nothing, nothing in this world is free. Yeah. Except for herpes. Yay. And then sometimes... Well, high five. Herpes, some, high five. Sometimes, sometimes, some people, have, some, paid some people have paid for it unintentionally. Herpes. There you go. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, God. There is a high five. Unknowingly. A herpes high five. Herpes high five. But, uh, <laughs> you don't have herpes. With, with, with the subject, the music, well, yeah. I, I want to mention this because he is near and dear to my heart, but the soundtrack for Shovel Knight is going to be done by friend of the show, Jake Vert Kaufman. Oh, sweet. So, the man that we all love for Double Dragon Neon nice. is doing the soundtrack for Shovel Knight. That's that, wait, that he's a friend might... of the show? Well, he's my friend, so... Can we get him <laughs> on the podcast one day and talk yeah. Double Dragon? If Double we, Dagron? Could we, we play get, Double Dragon with him? If we ever get something figured out with doing it online, he maybe live? he'll do it. California. Where's he go? <laughs> Let's fly out Let's to California go. tomorrow. Let's roll. Right. You well, buying the plane tickets? Of course. Let's get cool. some fucking Sky Miles. If you're buying the tickets, I'm in. <laughs> But uh, Sky yeah, sixty dollar package has the soundtrack with it. Yeah, that's Woo! awesome. So that's why I love Jay Kaufman. Do we have any more? You questions? know what other? Yeah. Do, we have, do we have yeah. any more? We gotta move on. We've been doing this for like, like three hours now. Well, that's because Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Yeah, Kickstarter is a good. Kickstarter. Topic. Uh, it's valid. Thanks, Gongo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gongo. Next question, uh, from. God damn it! You Alex know where we're at. We, we get. Oh God, <laughs> Alex! <laughs> I don't know where this is going. Uh, Let me read it. On, Let me read up. it. Go ahead. I'm going to read it. Read it aloud. Which one of you has the nicest butt? This is important. Um, the nicest? The nicest. I have the biggest. <sighs> this might be tough. I'm going to go with Ashley. Ashley has the nicest oh, yeah. butt. Out of, <laughs> say your wife has the nicest butt. Of, that, I, that's a good call. Good say. That's a, that's a good Look call. Look at us. I don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm probably hey. the most fit out of the room, so... But I have no ass. Are we gonna have to go with I have a, and tell uh, here? I have a I have a decent ass, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I was gonna say Huber's ass. I have a kinda cute. I have an, bend I have over. Okay ass. No. I'm nope. Nope. Then then I can't jump. I have to I'm going by what has been told to me by Turn other people. Stand up, twirl. Twirl no. for me. Ashley, how's my ass? I like it. See, Ashley likes my ass. Well your wife better like your ass. No, she doesn't have to. <laughs> She knows full and well that she doesn't thank, have to. Thank you, Alex, for your, your contribution. I knew there was going to be one. I, I'm going to say... I knew there was going to be one I'm, question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to nominate myself. I'm just going to say that. For nice well, you know what? Rock, paper, it's scissors, proportional. Nice it's proportional. There's... A, a, I can grab a handful. I've done it. You know what? <laughs> Let, let's give this one to Bogue. I can't say here. I've... I can't say I've ever looked at his ass before. That's no, never wait. been to one of our parties. Let's call, call him. Call him. Put him on speaker right now. Both. He's, he's probably with Jen, so I don't want to <laughs> bug him. <laughs> Which I just Wait, found out about call? not too long ago. Yeah, so my I'm gonna I'm gonna call Kurt. Best wishes, Ashley. What do you think of Bug's ass? We're gonna we're gonna get Kurt on nice the air. Ass. <laughs> what did we call? What did we make Kurt's name? I can't remember what Kurt's name well, was. What was Kurt's name? Kurt Kurt was on the. Uh, do we really have to spend this much time on an ass we question? We have to. We have We have to narrow this down. This, yeah, but uh, if we don't give them a definitive answer, then we've kind of failed. I said, Bogue... This is Reader Bogue Mail. Has gone, Reader Mail serious business. Bogue has gone from party to party just getting naked. Like, Look, the longest time, we, he was just naked Bogue. If we don't get to the... If we don't answer the Reader Mail questions, no one's going to no write it. But in. he doesn't know Bogue. I know, Bo. No, 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 no. no we're, he we're, doesn't know. This is this is just for today. This is just for us. He knows all of us. He's met you once. This is yes. Kurt. First of all, you're on speakerphone. Hi. Second of all, you're on the podcast. Oh, he hung uh, up. He hung up on. You. <laughs> ah. 
I think he hates speakerphone, actually. I forgot. Okay, so okay. We're, we're just giving this one to Bo. No, no, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Okay, you're not on speakerphone this time. <laughs> okay, you're not. That, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, uh, we're doing the podcast. That's why I have you on speakerphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we got a reader mail question in. That we need it. We need a third party to. Uh, it says it's important. Yeah, it says it's it's very important. The the reader question said, um, and we need a third party to answer this because we're all too biased. Okay. But what out of me, okay. Joe, and Huber, who has the nicest butt? Oh Jesus Christ! I can't be unbiased. <laughs> I can't be unbiased about your asses because <laughs> all your asses are so fine. It's like two really really muscular hamsters fighting under a pair. So, so the answer Three to the question time. is then all of our asses Come are on. the nicest asses. <laughs> well, you're just like, I yeah, fucking there, hate there you. There is no nicest ass between you three because you three have the nicest asses I've ever seen. It's like trying to say which fucking Japanese god is the best one. There is no best one. They all fucking rule. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Kurt. No problem. Bye, Kurt. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, you to fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Okay, so that was fair. Okay. That was fair. So, yeah. So, so, to answer your question. All of us. All of us. <laughs> I still say we give it to Bogue. All of us. In in memory of Bogue. All, in memory. All of us. He's not dead. <laughs> he's, he's just still not alive. Here. Right? He's, not, he's probably not going to be with us for a while now. That, well, no, he'll... We'll, we'll, we'll surprise him. We'll do the podcast at his house one day. Yeah. We'll, we'll go down there. We'll bring we'll bring cake or herpes and <laughs> and surprise them. We'll, and we'll bring crunchy snacks, crunchy, crunchy, crunchy snacks, snacks and fleshlights and herpes. Crunch Her- time episode. Herpes laden two. fleshlights. Yeah, crunchy herpes. Oh, no. All right, <laughs> move, move on. All, All right. right. Final question as of now from Zach of the Gaming Vault. Hey, coworker, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Uh, what games are you currently playing? Also, what games are you almost looking forward to in the coming months? Uh, Keep up the great work. You fucking liar. We suck at this. I'm playing Dinky Sports right you're, now. You're what? No. <laughs> Dink? You're uh, what? Oh, shit. What finished? Oh, that movie. My Jack Jim Water movie. Sports? Oh, uh, Water, water Sports. No, um... God, I'm playing right now lots of League of Legends. A little bit of StarCraft Lol. Two. Uh Lol. Huber and I are going to start Rayman Legends one of these weeks. We were supposed to start yesterday, but then, but then we we got into uh, we a got into five and a half hour spurt of League of Legends. That game is the devil. I was supposed to play Rayman Legends too. And I'm just Ubisoft is like, oh, we're gonna move it to the fall just fucking because. I'm uh, I'm just glad that I can finally play League of Legends because I found a character that I'm not too bad at, and surprisingly enough, uh, the character plays like a whirlwind barb. That's probably why I'm okay at it. Um, what I'm looking <laughs> that meant nothing to me. What I'm for looking Diablo forward 3. to. Oh. I'm looking forward to uh, nothing. Oh, oh come on! No, Monaco, Monaco. What's yours is mine. Is coming out. Uh, I think the 24th. That's probably the next game coming out that I'm gonna put some time into because that game looks fun as hell. Injustice. If hell were fun, it would be that. It'd be that. Injustice. I don't. I'm not looking forward to playing Injustice. I'm looking forward to buying the baller. I want that fucking fight, fight stick. Because it's a. Oh, I, I want that fight stick. It, it's it's a tournament stick with an old school bat top, bat top, and light up buttons. Oh yeah, it's hardcore. Did we find out if that's an actual Sanwa stick? It's the same thing as the as the sticks. Remember the stick I used to have? Sanwa. It's the same thing as that. Those tournament edition sticks, but it has a bat. But it has a bat top. It has a pro. Yeah, bat top. yeah. I'm sold. I need, um, I need that. I definitely need that. What else am I looking? Well, Blood Dragon comes out on the first. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, which Dragon. we're gonna talk about in a, in a bit. Um, uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. Um, I'm since, since you don't know what the hell you're saying, I'm gonna say that I finally been finished a uh, Bioshock Infinite, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. That was the shit. What are you looking forward to coming out? Looking forward to. Well, I I was on the fence about Injustice, but I ended up scrapping it just because. Why? I'm not into fighting games. I actually kind of really want a fighting style. game to get into right now. Mainly just because like uh, of how hardcore we got into Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Yeah, we were, we I was, were Dude, we were like all about... I made my own fight stick 
Like yeah, the fucking spray paint is still on is the still on my <laughs> sidewalk oh from my him Lord. painting it. Yeah. I told him go outside, do it on the on the pavement across the street. Why does he do it right on my fucking sidewalk in front of my house? My landlord, who's my friend's parents, they know we're all gamers. Is gonna go on the sidewalk one day and be like, "Who the fuck?" Oh, <laughs> it's it's all my fault. I know. Yeah, you're. A um, I'm also pretty excited for Dead Island Riptide. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I loved the first one. It had a lot of problems, a lot of glitches yeah, and but it issues. Was fun. Yeah, but it's it was cool, fun. Though. Go very, online very cool with idea. a couple of friends, and it's. A blast. It I doesn't agree. look like they fixed any of the problems um, I'm in the first game. <laughs> I'm excited for, uh, was it Wildstar? I'm trying to think of like the stuff that oh, we saw. Oh, yeah, past. Wildstar looks uh, interesting. Wildstar, I'm looking forward to, obviously, when Soul, Soul Forge goes uh, completely live on PC. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, I know you're going to make fun of me for this, but uh, Saints Row the Fourth. Or I can't four. fucking wait for that game. Um, I love Saints Row. Let's see here. Uh, what yeah, else did I see at PAX that was really, really fucking awesome? Um, Inside for Metro, Last Light. Oh, um, that new Double Fine game, Chrononauts or whatever. Time. I oh, really dude, freaking uh, Dungeon Defenders Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dungeon Defenders Two looks awesome. Really excited for that one because Dungeon Defenders One, I wasted so much time with that. And what's going to be really interesting about it is from what we saw at PAX. Uh, what was it? What was that? Like two, th two, three weeks ago now, right? Something like that. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. Oh, speaking of that, um, did you? Were, were you gonna do Pax Prime? Did you figure that out yet? I, nothing's been figured out. Let, think about it. Let me know, cause I, I did talk to Kyle. And if you don't want to go, or if you can't go, I'm gonna roll out there, uh, hopefully with a crew, uh, and I'm gonna try to cover it for the Gaming Vault. www.gamingvault. TheGamingVault.com? Yes. TheGamingVault.com. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, Dungeon Defender. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah! THQ. Dungeon, uh, Dungeon Defender Close. 2, um, there is going to be another multiplayer mode that is exactly like League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 if, for those who are familiar with Dungeon Defenders, it's cool. For those who aren't, it's, um, it's sort of like a tower defense game, but it's third person, and you get to pick, like, warrior, wizard, it's got a unique art style. And you'll be like inside a dungeon, and they'll, you'll have like a crystal at the center, and you have to try and build towers, and you can also attack, but build build towers, upgrade them. But there's also like an item inventory system that's similar to like you know your your typical like MMO kind of thing. Yeah. So it was it was a tower defense action RPG ish kind of thing. And what they're doing with the sequel is they're making it more of a uh, a third person well, view. Th they're MOBA. still keeping everything. All the play styles that were in the first one are still in it. But not immediately. They're launching the MOBA first and they're going to see how that does and then shortly thereafter they plan on launching the the normal tower defense style and if the MOBA takes off they're going to try to they're going to Put a little bit more work on that, and just delay the other version a little bit longer. I was I was under the impression when we went and talked I, to the guys. Oh, I, I talked to the developer for like like fifteen minutes or something because I was trying okay. to get trying well, to get beta. Wait, so. Trying to get beta stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, is all your banging coming through? Probably. Yeah, I'm I'm like fidgety today. I apologize. Uh, go rumble. I apologize, quick. viewers. Think, no, I, I did viewers. that. I did that early. I mean, what I that, never uh, do what that. Was, God doesn't let me do. What was that, that Marvel? What was that Marvel game that was getting demoed a lot? Oh, I didn't care. It's it's just a Marvel themed MOBA game. DC's doing the same thing. Yeah, it's, I can't get into MOBA games. There's too many MOBAs coming out now. It's like Dota Two is really cool. League of Legends is really cool. Yeah. And like some of those other ones might be neat, but you saw how much time we have to put in the league just to get oh good my at God. it. I'm at level it. ten. You have I've to been, be at level thirty before you even start really I, playing. I've game. been playing league for like a year and a half, and I'm still not level thirty because I don't play it enough, and it sucks because it's one of those things. It's either you're all or nothing. Yeah. If, if you're not playing it enough, you're gonna get your ass blasted like Tremors three, <laughs> and it, it, it. I guess that's a reason I never got into MOBA style games. I just I. It's, they're very they're very interesting and it's very rewarding when you when you have a good game with a good team but if you do not have a good game with a good team you're just you're frustrated you never want to play it again or like league has a lot of problems with who's on their servers players being assholes language barriers because like people on the servers are coming from yeah. other countries Everywhere. because I guess their servers are, are ass and it's it's obnoxious. It's absolutely obnoxious. I went a week straight without being able to get into a good game, Jesus. and I quit for like two months because I just couldn't take it anymore. And now I'm back to playing it like five hours a day. 
Anything uh, else you're looking forward to playing? Something just came out this week that I didn't get to pick up yet, but I'll be doing it later tonight. Guacamelee for the PS3 and PS that. Vita. What is that? It's like a luchador side scrolling beat em up. I like beat em ups. With Double Dagger on. Double Dagger. Holla holla. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it looks more like along the lines of Shank instead of Double Dagger on. Double Dagger on? Yeah. Like in Streets of Rage. From, from what I'm reading, it has like a lot of uh, Metroidvania style elements to it. Ooh, I do like that. I've heard nothing Ooh. but good about Ooh. it, but I don't know much about it. So I, what like, I know is I'm eager as hell to play it. Um, yeah, pretty much the only thing I'm looking forward to really that's in the immediate future. When is uh, when is when is Tekken Cross Street Fighter coming out? No, no, they'll probably show some stuff off at it at E3. The E trips because I know that it's they better. I think they just had a screenshot of it or something. They better. But they didn't. Show well, the I gameplay. saw like a graphical thing of like how they're doing some of the Street Fighter characters Tekken yeah, style, yeah, which they, I thought was kind of cool. Some uh, of them, look but you know why badass, that game doesn't matter? Because in under a month, Far Cry Three Blood Dragon Blood is coming Dragon. out. That game's gonna be. Bold. I cannot wait for that game. Mark Four style, motherfucker. Um. Yeah, so the game can, looks insane. Yeah, well, one of so, the best, one of the best tutorials I've ever seen. <laughs> well, yeah, so right, so the, so the, so the viewers. Fucking you know, tutorials! I just want to. I love calling. I love calling them viewers, even though they're not viewing. Hey. Um, we watched right before the podcast. We watched the leaked uh, tutorial section of the game of of uh, Far Cry Three Blood Dragon, which is a standalone expansion in the vein of really shitty. Uh, straight to VHS 80s sci-fi action flicks and it's absolutely hysterical the t- the whole tutorial is like making fun of itself the whole way yeah. through press A to prove that you have the capability to read <laughs> like stuff like that it's really funny it's like are you tired of these tutorials press or upgrade now to the yeah. premium <laughs> yeah if you're tired of these tutorials you can subscribe to make them go you can subscribe to Kobayashi whatever yeah tutorial it's, service it's, to make them go away and have the game play itself and the loading you. screens are a friggin tracking icon like a v, an old VCR tracking. yeah but it doesn't even like it doesn't even show you a it just progress tracks, it, just it just tracks just back and forth <laughs> well and what's what I love about the game is it's it not only is it making fun of all these these tropes of old 80s sci-fi action flicks but it's also making fun of the, the current state of the industry yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I, I can't wait to play through it just to see how ridiculous those jokes get. And the gameplay looks fun, too. It's, I, it's I think the funniest part for me, the first time I really saw a lot about it, was how all the cutscenes are, like, straight out of an NES. Yeah, they're all, they're all pixel, pixel style cutscenes. Love that. And then it's to the game, it's super high definition, neon colors, explode. It's just it's sort of like the top. It, it, they're doing for Far Cry what they did for Double Dragon with Double Dragon Neon. They're, they're giving this 80s neon color, over the top ridiculous makeover. And it looks like it's going to work jokes. perfectly. Yeah, no, it's going to be think, fantastic. I, I can't wait for this freaking game. I didn't even really get a chance to play a lot of Far Cry 3 because it's, I, a lot of the times if I'm playing something on a console, my fiance's around and she's like <laughs> Well, Hard, well, hardcore, um, you know, like, don't beat up or kill animals. Um, <laughs> as, as you're stabbing your way through the jungle. And then I'm like, I, and it literally, like, a couple missions in, you're like, oh, yeah, hunt this thing. And then skin the fuck out of it. And, and it's like, shows all the meat of the thing, like, in your head. It's like, not a real animal. It's a digital animal. Yeah, but still. It's uh, kind we're of getting into a topic we should totally get into another yeah, I don't want to get no. into this at all. Well, anyway. not, not me either. But the, <laughs> well, but the problem was, I couldn't necessarily play it around her. So I was just like, well, all right, I guess I'm not going to be able to play this game. Well, if it's I can understand. I can differentiate the whole thing because I know it's just a game, yeah. but it's still sh- like for her, it's still just shitty to watch. What if it's like a fantasy game with non-real animals, <sighs> like things that don't exist? We really don't have to have this. Co- I, yeah, I'm not the, like I said. I don't curious, have a like, problem. The... I don't have a problem. Oh with boy, it. I don't um, have a problem with it. I'm just saying. B- oh before boy. we get into the final thing, which is which is we're gonna go into talking about Bioshock Infinite, which was something we just Bioshock. recently played. Bioshock. Uh, we have one more reader mail question from Javen. Oh, is it freaking? Is it Infinite? I can't wait to see Infinite? what this is. Oh, he didn't. No, he didn't. He sent it. It goes to it goes to Joe. Is it going to be? It's going to be Nvidia and uh, ATI. It's, which one? Javen is a very opinionated uh, uh, person. <laughs> Good say. I, yeah, I had, I, had, I had words, but I almost got stabbed. Oh no, he's covering his face. God damn it! What is it? Okay, what is it? My question is: 
do you, with the letter U, not the word U. Of course, because it's shaven. Do you think there are more black PC gamers or girl PC gamers? <laughs> LMFA. <Dude. laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. right, uh, for, for a backstory, for a backstory, he is black. Yeah, yeah his, J- his image shows that he's Javen, black. Javen is one of those people that you meet, and you think that he is the blackest kid you've ever met, and then he starts going into how sweet his PC build is, and how much of a hardcore PC... Like, the kid is, the kid is sm- smarter than the average bear. Like, he, he uh... But you'd, you'd never know it by looking I at him. I know what the answer isn't. Black girl PC game. <laughs> I don't... Really know? I, you that. know, I've never. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think that it would. Um, I don't I know. Don't I've never th- I answer this because I don't want to get like shot. Well, no, 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 no. no, no, no. no. I get stabbed. I, I mean, obviously, it's not good to profile, but to be completely <laughs> fair, we already did. <laughs> to be completely fair, from a marketing standpoint, I think there is a. I would say that there's probably more. I think there's more, I think more, there's more black, black gamers, gamers than I'm female gonna, gamers. I'm going to go out and say that there's more female gamers on PC because the if, Sims. if we're going to get into this, oh my God, well, not, yeah. not just The Sims, Ugh. but Facebook is still PC games. No, that's not what Javen is ac- would be asking, though. But that, J- but from his perspective, but he would actually be Javen, about Javen, If Javen were here, he'd be like, fuck Facebook. If you were here. But I'm, I'm answering the question fairly. Well, well, no, here's the other thing that we're not taking into account. He said black black gamers or girl gamers. There, He didn't say well, no, male black gamers. Huh? Yeah, huh? True. Huh? true. So there's going to be more black gamers. And I, I'm, I'm saying that simply because the state of gaming right now is... Um, I think we're seeing more game, more female gamers come into the scene yeah. um, because gaming has become more accessible in the past decade and we've had this is we're, we're seeing a whole generation of people growing up with video games where we started growing up it was a very with, niche thing with like, it really just starting with games yeah. starting and we yeah. we got into it for whatever reason and it doesn't mean like a lot of people didn't because games were different back then See, I'm, I'm really trying to think now like which category would black girls be in would they be with the girls or with black gamers? Well, I I would I would <laughs> tend to think that they would be in both. Would we um, would we just like write we're, them we're, off we're going too we're going too both? much into the question. Here's the here's the thing. I I did fr- I did forget to take into account all female gamers with The Sims because my fiance included. There are They're just casual s- games in general. There are five or six expansions for The Sims Three on that computer sitting right there right now. Well, no. See, the the biggest because I, that's all. Like, oh, sure, they're hers. I've played it like for two hours. I put see, in I the cheats. I knew they were yours. I put in. I put in the cheats to get as much money as I possibly could, and to see if I could buy all the shit. And, and then you hung yourself. I think pretty I think, much. Yeah. I, I I made sure that I deleted all of my doors, put all the carpets in my house, <laughs> and lit all of the fireplaces. All right, was, all right. Let's 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 move on from from Javen's question. We spent way too much time on to begin with. Listen, um, if we spend no, twenty minutes on who has the nicest ass, that's true. That's a, is, that's an important question. That was so laid out this. that it was an important question. So is this? No, because it's it's a question that cannot be answered in the end of it because Not necessarily. It, it will lead in it will lead into. Um, it, it leads into the cultural it, it, the cultural issues between gamers and the gaming industry. It leads into the feminist issue of gamers and the gaming industry. And we don't want to women talk about in the gaming what's industry in general. Anita Sarkeesian. Yeah, about, don't mention. Yeah, that. I just, no, see that's that's the problem with the question is no, that we're, we're, it's it's a bigger exist. issue that we she can't even exist. We're go not. into. And uh, just checking the battery life here. Yeah. We're, we're low. So, Bioshock Infinite, you beat it. Finally, yes, I beat it. And what did you so, think of it? Well, first off, if you're listening to this and you haven't beat Bioshock Infinite, uh, spoiler alert, so just skip ahead for a bit. S- spoiler alert, well, everyone it, dies. Yeah, but you know what? I think this should Pretty be... much, yeah. Everybody fucking died at the end. <laughs> no, not everybody died at the end. Who didn't? Uh, Elizabeth. And... How didn't she? She's still alive. How? Okay, here's here's how the universe goes, and I actually saved the timeline because, thing on my desktop for this. Because that end of the game was such a gigantic mind fuck to me. I'm no, it's because it, I didn't play the game. <laughs> it's not that bad. So here's here's what happened: is it was fucking sliders in video game form. You you fight you. The whole game going on is Elizabeth has these powers, and she's getting uh, she knows how to use them, but she's getting better with them. 
and you're sort of solving the mystery of why she has them, as well as why the city exists and for what purpose it has throughout the whole game. And right at the end, it's basically you kill the main bad guy, and you who is you? Who is you? But um, you so find Looper. You find out that there are uh, multiple dimensions, and the the what happened was. After the battle at Wounded Knee, which you fought in, bo as Booker fought in, he uh, had he it felt horrible at all the atrocities he had committed. So he went to try and find peace with himself by trying to find God. And then he, in this universe, he decided like, no, that's not me. That's not how. That's not going to forgive me for what I've done. God isn't going to help me. And he goes off. Now he has a child. After this point, he is still so grief ridden that he doesn't know like what to do with himself. Now, also in a parallel universe, there are the Latices, the twins. Yeah. They are for that first half of the game I just saw that as the lettuce twins. Yeah, they they are seeing they they are developing a a, a technology that in another universe the booker who did accept God into his heart and made Columbia has them working on. And they open doors into other universes and uh, Booker, the evil Booker, goes into this other universe because he wants a child. Because his wife cannot give him a child. So he remembers, I have a child. You know? I, I have, you know, I, they open up this universe and see this other scrummy version of himself that is wasting away as this, you know, private eye or whatever, who hates himself for what he had done, and he's taking care of this kid. And he tells him, I can forgive you now. I will, f I, I will, I will take away the debt that you owe in sin if you give me your child. So he gives up his child, but changes his mind and freaks out and tries to get her back because he realizes this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna help anything. Yeah. And then when she goes through that portal and her finger gets cut Sliced off in off, that, yeah. now because there's a piece of her of one person that exists in both universes, that's what gives her her powers. Because the universe is fucking up because there's no way that one person can exist organically in two different universes. Yeah. So she starts getting these fucked up powers that don't really make any sense. And she could open the portals to the other world. Yeah. And now the Lutices, who realize they did a really fucking bad thing. Because this could this could shatter the universe. This is things are gonna be unstable now, as that and that's why things are getting unstable as the game goes on. Like the time the, the weird time distortions and things like that with the tears. There is a there is a problem with the universe that is happening, and this girl's way too powerful. Um, so something needs to stop. So what they do is they go and they get a version of you who wants his daughter back, and they pull you into this universe. And they pull you in there and they, they go, if you get the girl, we will repay the debt. But crossing the universes, as we saw with other characters and other things, starts having problems weird effects with... effects on you. Yeah, weird effects on you where your brain cannot comprehend it. So it starts trying to create uh, logical leaps for the gaps in memories of why you made decisions, why you're here, what's going on. So you don't know what the hell is going on until the end when you find out and it's explained that there are all of these other universes and you decide I need to stop this guy because look at all these horrible things that he's doing you need to stop him no matter what to save Elizabeth because you care about her and you know that she deserves this good life not this horrible you know locked away thing or the horrible future of her getting basically mind raped and causing some sort of apocalyptic event yeah um so she had figured out who you are and it goes back to that one singular point, that point of baptism, where you either become uh, a villain or, you know, or anything, or you just go on with your life and you allow yourself to be drowned by all the multiple versions. Yeah. But at the end, um, apparently, there's only one Elizabeth left shown. Which means that there's one that still existed in one possible universe. Yeah, but all the, the noise of that hit in the musical score, every time one disappeared, hit one last time and the screen went blank. Which to me, that was her disappearing and all of it disappearing. Well, that's, I, that's I, how I interpreted that ending. 
But I'm assuming because it's a Bioshock game, if you beat it on 1999 mode, there's another little extra ending, yeah. which I haven't looked up. Um, I'm not sure if it's there. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't looked is. at it either. And actually, I, I read 1999 modes options wrong. If I knew, because I played it through the hardest difficulty available. Yeah. If I knew what that setting was, I would have put in the code to just access it from the start. And do Konami it. code. Yeah, it's the Konami code. What's uh, but, what is 1999? It's just like a a more a harder version of the game that has different limitations on what you can do and health regen and all that stuff. And if you die and you can't afford the respawn point, game over. You have to go back to your last save. You can't respawn. So it's just it's just more difficult. But um, I think that it, it, the after the credit scene of him hearing her and going into the other room, I think that's what that is. Is it's um, because uh, when you think about it, there is technically another up. Uh, when you get to the whole, the idea of multiple universes and things like that, there could be a universe that was divergent where. He didn't die. Yeah, she what he wasn't drowned. You know, that's why. Um, that's why I said the ending is just like a mind fuck. Yeah, there could be there could be an ending where he goes home. He never goes to the baptism thing, and yeah. he is a good father. And Elizabeth grows up. You know what I mean? The there, actual game itself, though, amazing game. The, except for that siren battle that you warned me about last week, and it was fucking awful. Um, yeah, that was awful. And did you notice though? They seemed like they tr they wanted to have this giant open world, and originally what I thought was the sky hooks were going to connect all these different places yeah. in this open world, but instead, when they realized that they couldn't do it, they made the sky hooks just in these chunks that yeah. loop around the chunks, which in honestly doesn't make any goddamn sense because if I can walk up the street, why do I have these weird sky rail things going around? There's no point to them. They do have them connecting certain chunks, but when it's just a city block, like it, it's kind of yeah. It, you can tell it was just for gameplay, and uh, it, I, it was still fun. It though. was still very fun. I'm, I'm kind of pissed. It took me into like over half into the game before I realized you could speed up and slow down on those things. <laughs> I'm trying to kill people, and I'm like, this is fucking impossible. Yeah. And then I just bumped the stick down the one time. I'm like, son of a bitch, I could stop on this. Yeah. Oh, this I just would have made a, so much things so much easier if I knew about this before. I really would have loved to have seen the full vision go where it is an open world game, because I think it would have yeah. been amazing. I was thinking earlier today, too. Maybe Infinite, like, too. I really want an Oculus Rift, the, the VR headset that's coming out. Um, have you heard of that? No. Oh, oh man. Uh, the guy, it's the guys who did... Uh, uh, guys at id Software, I think, did this. And uh, it's... It was... Uh, they redid, like, Doom 3 to use it. And huh. it is a VR headset that works incredibly well. Uh, Team Fortress 2 has been adapted to use it, too. And apparently it's, like, it's amazing. Like, huh. from all accounts, it's small, too. It's, it's got a very small thing on your head. It's not so it's not like a virtual boy? No, it's not. It's nothing like what you conventionally think of for a VR headset. You strap it with but, shackles. See what's weird about it? And this is what kind of threw me off about it, but I'm sure you can get used to it. Yeah. What's weird about it is, let's say I'm sitting in this chair, okay, and I'm looking straight ahead, you know, 12 o'clock, and I'm running around with my character in Team Fortress. If I want to turn to see my 3 o'clock, I move my head to turn to the 3 o'clock. I don't have to move my character. Yeah. You can literally just turn your body and turn your head, and then all of a sudden you're looking that way I think in I did see a video about this. Which is fucking weird was there, as shit. Was like there like a promo video of it? With there was like a guy a sitting at a table with a controller going through like but some of the, the demos. Like some kind of medieval thing, a knight with a sword walking around, like looking around. Right. Yes. Okay, then yeah, I there saw was a it. well. There was like a village. Yeah, there were like three different um, sceneries that they gave them. Yeah, I, and they I, looked I, fucking ridiculous. I'm really, like, really excited for this because games like Bioshock that have that atmosphere and that that world that want to crazy stop look. Well, I think see, I didn't, I didn't get to get as absorbed into Bioshock as I wanted to because something felt, I felt disconnected from the world. Um, I don't know why. Like I can't really explain it, but. If I had something like this for the games that I play for the story and getting absorbed in it and being a part of this world, that's going to be amazing. Like I'll be able to walk down a city street in a game and I'll be able to be like, I'll be able to look around. If I hear a guard yell, I'll be like, oh shit, you know, I'll be able to look. Like it'll be a reaction, yeah. and you really will be able to get pulled into it. Um, 
I think that would have led really well to something like Bioshock, and I'm curious to see if. Um, when is it, that supposed to go live? Uh, in like May or June. It's that's it's soon. that's soon. Well, yeah, it's been. Wow. You can you can buy a development kit, and they they ship as soon as they're basically ready to ship Jeez. to you. Wow, so. that's crazy. And then hey, maybe next gen, right? Except for the Wii U. Well, no, it's going to be a PC thing. I the reason it why is, we won't it, see it's a PC thing. the reason why we won't see this on a console is the same reason why the Virtual Boy failed, is because another person cannot see what you're doing. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the player is doing. What matters to the company and the marketing team is you have to be able to like show your friends. You have to be able to play, you know, play Call of Duty and be like, look how fun this is. Look Fucking how a, awesome bro. this is. You know, <laughs> like that's that that's that's the goal. When Fucking you knifed you, bro. As soon as it becomes a personal experience, it becomes a niche experience. Dude, playing Counter Strike with that headset, that's gonna be amazing. Uh, it's gonna be that's gonna be fucking rough. That's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be rough, bro. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be knifing bro. all day, all day. But anyways, so, we don't have any more email. Uh, no more questions. No? So it looks like the Vaultcast SML Vaultcast viewer mail special <laughs> is over. Well, um, yeah, but I'm. I mean, are we gonna do that a little bit for each episode? Well, yeah. If we get reader mail, we, we will read it. If we get them. well, they do. They do have to start sending in. Um, Ideas enter the for the small S, N, S what S M and L will stand for. Squishy man love. That's your entry. Squishy. Yes. <laughs> We're not allowed to enter. No, we could send them in anonymously. Squirrel meat lips. Hip hop anonymous. Hip hop anonymously. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there was anything like that I wanted to touch up on. Nah, I figure figure we could just end the if you if you watched. WrestleMania this week, and we're pissed off by it. Fuck WrestleMania. But, oh but we're then redeemed by watching Raw. Our, our it was featured okay. song this week. No, Raw this week was fantastic. It was okay. Don't think of the Attitude Era. Don't. You can't you, not you think about to. the Attitude Era. It's gone. WWE ignores that it ever happened. So you I have ignore to. wrestling ever happened. Yeah, we know. Well, yeah. here's the thing. I used to be really, really into wrestling. I, I caught WrestleMania last no, year. What, what he's trying to say him. is he really used to be into lubed up men on the television screen. He used to be really into them. Like Grab I'm talking to. like used to. six inches deep into them. <laughs> Balls um, deep. Balls deep. Last year I watched WrestleMania on a whim because like a, a buddy of mine was having it over at his house. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll go over and watch it. Now this year it was like, you know what? I really wanted to see the Undertaker CM Punk match, so it was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go over to Larger's house, hmm. and because uh, he invited uh, myself and my fiance over to uh, to watch it, and we came over to watch it, and I was thoroughly disappointed with the entire production as a whole. The CM Punk and Undertaker match was okay. No, Punk or Taker delivered. It was it was okay. You're just pissed because Punk lost. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but but the match itself was great. See, now here's the thing: I grew up with matches like fucking like Undertaker Mankind. Like that's like I, I watched that when it happened. Yeah, me too. Like to 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 be so into wrestling when I was younger and how awesome it was, and then like come back now and and see where it's at now. You like, gotta remember, dude, Undertaker's it. fifteen years older now. I understand he, that. He but, only wrestles once a year. But last year it was Rock and Cena, once in a lifetime. It'll it is yeah, the we're, only we're, time. And we're then one year later, match. it's a sh Rock vs. Cena, twice in a lifetime. Yeah, like, not, I dude, don't like, watch wrestling. Fuck but that man. Last year like, was supposed to be Undertaker's final match. No, it wasn't. Yeah, no. no it there, was. there were rumors for years that it was his final match. But yeah. my main thing is, uh, they don't give a fuck about what people actually want in wrestling. No, that's I why would at, love... Raw, at Raw, the crowd made themselves heard. Well, right, but which it, was I shouldn't want to. I would. I should want to watch a show or a production. Because a I like the production, not because of the people <laughs> calling the production out on how shitty it is. <laughs> that, I think that's what made this week's Raw so good. That that was what made it palatable for me. Everything else to me was just like, meh, whatever. Because you're saying that the one thing that you liked was the whole Money in the Bank thing? That was what you really enjoyed, right? Out of what? Money in the Bank. Yeah. I liked everything oh, but about what, okay, Raw Okay, but what was, your main, what was your main thing? The crowd. 
Uh, not I'm talking about the I production. Can't, I can't pick <laughs> I w- a minute I watched of wrestling it for the crowd. I thought the right. the entire episode was just fantastic. I saw Barrett. everything coming from a mile away. And I only, only watched time. WrestleMania and I hadn't watched wrestling in years. I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's right. That guy had this thing where you have the briefcase and you could You oh, saw he Barrett fucked his winning leg. it back? Absolutely. How did you see that happening? Because of the way that you reacted yesterday, or with with WrestleMania, you're like, "Wait, Barrett, I I really wish Wade Barrett would have won." And then the next day, I was just like, "Oh wait, he's got an opportunity." Yeah, I bet you he's gonna fucking win it back. And then boom, it happened. How many times? Like, how many times do you see people have a title for a day? It rarely happens. You don't so remember fact- much of the Attitude Era, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> You remember the hardcore uh, 24-7 yes, rule where people I, were losing the... That's its own separate thing. But people I'm were losing like, the title within five minutes of having it? Yes. <laughs> like, if, if, like, yeah, new champion! Oh, wait a minute! Like, yeah, new champion! <laughs> if, if it lasted five minutes. Right. I'm, I'm talking like a legit, real title. That was what made wrestling interesting to me. There were plenty of things that made wrestling interesting to me back in the day. Now, all of it's gone. Just the fact that, like, when we were watching WrestleMania, and, like, the only thing that I saw was, like, a couple chair shots, and, like, oh, we ran into the stairs. That was, like, yeah. that was, that would have been in the first match of WrestleMania's yeah. past. And it, and everything past then would have gotten okay. progressively well, It's been cooler. different for a decade now because of their whole PG bullshit, which well, I it hate. sucks to be them, and I'll never watch I hate, it again. I hate the PG <laughs> bullshit. I hate it. I wish they would go back to TV-14. I wish there would be TV blood. 14. I, I miss the chair shots TV to the head, 14, but I can understand yeah. the reason they don't do that anymore. I've taken plenty of chair shots from when I was wrestling before. Dude, have, after the Benoit it thing. Sucks. That's the guy who needs shoulder surgery. Hey, fuck you. That is completely <laughs> unrelated. Dude, after the Benoit thing, they're taking the whole concussion and brain injury a lot more serious, which I can understand. I can understand that too, but it comes with the territory. Just like me, like I'm going to probably ha- going to have to get my shoulder operated on because I've torn my rotator cuff. Because he was wrestling. Because he, he because I was because I went and played a show and pl- I was playing my kazoo too hard. Um, but I know that That's that comes. What she said. Yeah, and he I was, quotes around that kazoo. <laughs> I uh, I know that that he comes with the territory. I know that that comes with the territory for me. The gaming vault, a performer, ladies and gentlemen. So I know that I'm taking a risk by being a performer as a profession. But that's something that I've already understood and I've come to terms with. So I'm going yeah, to get there, there's a I'm difference there's this. a difference between knowing understanding that you're going to take a risk as a performer and doing a job that for a multi-billion as, dollar corporation. Well, no, 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 no. Having having a performance job that is inherently physically dangerous. Cuz I mean a drummer unless you get in a fight but I mean, you which know, you'd be surprised. That I happens mean, the, a lot more the wrest- no. wrestling guys, if they fuck that up, broken neck. That's if you fuck up, why you have to train? If you fuck up, no unison bonus. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know? no, no unison bonus. I mean, that's. Um, but that there are a lot more professions that than just performing that take that into consideration. The fallopian tuba. The fallopian tuba. Yeah, um, but again, it all comes, I'm it saying comes down to WWE. A multi-billion dollar corporation not wanting its name drugged through the mud because another one of its performers further through the mud. Is that better? <laughs> because another one of its performers fucking snapped because of brain damage over the years but and murdered his family. But it's also probably because they take any old fucking schmuck that they can run with and market, at least from what I can see. Like I said, I've only watched wrestling for uh, Monday and Sunday. Well, then you're and not. The last time I've then watched, you're not qualified enough to, that, to enjoy this episode. I'm barely qualified. I'm barely, Koala. barely qualified. <laughs> all right, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap I, this up. I think up. we can all agree that wrestling that sucks. I understand. I you're right. That one of the highlights of the episode was fun. The funniest oh. thing I ever, and I'm including Attitude Era. On this one, oh, God. the only thing that I thought was oh, really God. cool about this episode, this guy has this really shitty like like, like cha-cha salsa cha cha intro music. So the crowd started like as soon as the match started, the crowd was like singing the music like like it was for the entire match. For the whole match, so good. It was hysterical. Because so at first I'm like I'm listening to it and I'm like. 
Is that the crowd doing that? <laughs> Did they just forget to turn the guy's music off? We're like, what the fuck is going on right and now? And then he got his ass kicked, and they hit his music, and you can hear them all singing along. <laughs> and apparently they did it all through the night. Oh, yeah, because I heard it like... While they were leaving the arena, they were honking it on their horns. <laughs> so we are going to end this episode with fun. Dong. Go. by any means. Uh, meh.